Well, I'm out here at the uh, 63 Olds working on it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I believe this has a uh, burnt exhaust valve in it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and test that with my new U.S. General Cylinder Leakage Tester. I got a Harbor Freight. I was looking on the internet and it seems a lot of people have had problems with this, but uh, I'll show you how to operate it in a second. First thing you want to do is make sure you're at top dead center on the particular cylinder you want to test. Now, on these 394s, I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty easy to find top dead center because you can see the piston. You want to be on the compression stroke if possible because, uh, see, this is e actually easier with two people, but you get it on the compression stroke. Um, easiest way to do that with two people is have one of them stick their thumb over the top and the other one turn the engine over, either by hand or with the starter. If you use the starter, you got to have the ignition disabled. Uh, and then you find the compression stroke and put it to top dead center. And then you'll insert your little hose tool into the spark plug hole. I'll go ahead and do that. Well, now that you've got the little uh, little hose screwed in there, go ahead and pull out your leakage tester and uh, make sure that this valve is turned out counterclockwise all the way. And then what you can do is hook it up to your air source. Now I've got uh, actually an adapter. Kind of hard to do with uh, one hand. Hang on a second. There we go. All plugged in. Now you're going to want to... Uh, Go ahead and turn it in, this little knob, until that second gauge reads zero PSI. It'll take a while here. Let's see. Wonder if my uh, compressor yeah, there's air in it. Oh come on now. Keep junk. There we go. I had this uh, knob pushed up. I'm trying to do it by hand, but. There you go. We'll just go ahead and set that to zero. Now when that's at zero, you can go ahead and plug it into your hose that you screwed into the spark plug hole. And now you'll see on the gauge, I'm reading 40% leakage, which is not good. And to tell where it's leaking, you can go ahead and listen to various things. You can listen to the oil cap which I know it's, it'll always sound out of there because your rings your rings will always let air through and you can listen at uh, the radiator cap but in my case I have to listen at the exhaust now it's very faint but I can hear it so I'm losing uh, I'm losing pressure through the exhaust which means I've got most likely a burnt valve so I'm going to go ahead and Crack the radiator here. Close up the oil cap. Let's see if I can hear anything in the radiator. Now I don't hear anything coming out of there and well I can't see any bubbles, but normally if you had a bad head gasket you'd uh, you'd hear it come out of there or you'd have bubbles coming up. But since I don't hear anything, and I don't see any bubbles, I think I'm good there. So that's how you use the cylinder leakage tester. Um, now I'll show you exactly what happened to my head or my valve. Now this is basically what a cil cylinder head will look like. Um, this one's actually off of a 95 Park Avenue 6 cylinder so it, it's going to look different than that one obviously but they're basically the same. These are your valves. Um, your cylinder would be right here and blocked. This is the bottom of the head. Um, the big ones your intake, the little ones your exhaust. Now what happens is, on these old engines especially, is when it gets hot, uh, the valve, actually little chunks of it start uh, breaking off and burning off and going away. Now my car, uh, actually it got hot once or twice and I found out the cooling system wasn't working right because the water pump was ruined and uh, actually the fan clutch was bad too. So I replaced both those things but uh, somewhere in the middle I burnt the exhaust valve on the, at least that one cylinder. Now I could replace just the one valve but there's really no point in doing that. They come in sets of eight so 
I figure I'll get a set of those. And they're 90 bucks or so. But that's, that's not really the big deal. It's the uh, machine work I want done to it. Because these old engines, they don't have the hardened valve seats. The uh, part where the valve actually rides on the back side of the head here. And uh, <clears throat> I want hardened valve seats so that I don't have any issues with that in the future. Uh, I don't know what the machine work will cost to have those installed. That's the part that uh, scares me. So I'd have to take both heads off. I'd have to get two new head gaskets. Um, intake gaskets, of course. I'd probably get valve cover gaskets while I'm at it. And, you know, it, it's, it's a decent sized job. Um, and I, <laughs> I really don't want to spend money, but I think I'm going to have to on this particular car. And then since I got the heads off, I might as well have the heads checked, make sure there's no cracks, make sure everything's straight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and replace the valve, valve seals there. Might as well do that, and that all adds up to more money. But, yeah, he'll be back on the road soon enough. <coughs> i got to find a good machine shop that'll put them seats in for me. And once I do that, I'll probably show you what I do there. It may not be this year, I don't know. I've been laid off for a while and money's a little tight, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs>